reported if you didn't hear Tom Brady beats the NFL in Deflategate court case. The judge has nullified the league's four game suspension. A man I miss very much, Stephen A, is with us now from vacation. Stephen A, your reaction. Well, first of all, um, believe it or not, contrary to what my, my partner in crime, the Skip Bayless, may believe, I'm pleasantly surprised because the fact of the matter is, as I've said repeatedly, even though I think that Tom Brady brought most of this on himself, the fact is the NFL season without Tom Brady, there certainly would have been something missing. We all know, as I've said on many occasions, that this was much ado about nothing as far as I'm concerned. I don't give a damn if he was throwing Nerf football. He's still Tom Brady. He's still one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. And when you think about this NFL season, you wanted to to see him play. Having said all of that, I am surprised that the NFL lost this. They got it in the court they wanted it in. Roger Goodell in the National Football League got this heard in New York as opposed to Minneapolis. Um, and, and considering the fact that the judges in this locale in New York City are supposedly uh, league friendly as opposed to union friendly. The fact that this ruling came down, I think, is an incredible indictment against Roger Goodell. The case is still undecided. Um, I expect the NFL uh, to be who they are and to, and to appeal this decision. It can obviously still go to the appellate court, but I definitely believe to a strong degree that Tom Brady was uh, exonerated in all of this, and my hat's off to him. So, time out just a second. Yeah, are, do I hear you moonwalking off your old opinion by saying, oh, isn't this great that Tom Brady does get to play in week one? Is that what you're saying? Um, Skip, that's not moonwalking. And you, as usual, you don't listen. You hear what you want to hear. You believe what you want to believe. Maybe that loud shirt you're wearing is blocking your ears <laughs> to some degree. I've said, on, I've said on repeated occasion that Tom Brady brought this on himself. All he needed to do was to be a bit cooperative, a bit more cooperative, and it would not have come to this point. Tom Brady, according to reports, confirmed as much because that's why he was willing to accept a one to two game suspension, you know, in all of this because they were going to deem it cooperative just as long as they did not insist on him admitting and acknowledging some level of guilt. If I remember correctly, that has been my consistent position. I've also stated on many occasions I still wanted him to play football. I just blame this to some degree on him because I felt that had he been a bit more cooperative, if you recall, Skip Bayless, I repeatedly said on numerous occasions, you are Tom Brady. If you have to call the commissioner himself, go take him out to dinner, meet with him in his office for lunch or whatever, and have a conversation and be real with him about what transpired it wouldn't have come to any of this. So this whole process, this arduous process that took place was on the shoulders of Tom Brady as opposed to just Raj Goodell being incredibly irresponsible and weak in his argument. But in the end, to pay $5,000 for an investigation, certainly you shouldn't hire Ted Wells again. That's number one. Number two, if you're Tom Brady, I'm going to agree with what Shannon Sharp said just a few minutes earlier. And by the way, Shannon, keep doing a great job. I'm proud of you, bro. Thank you, bro. The bottom line is Shannon Sharp highlighted how if you're Rod Goodell, maybe it's in your best interest to step back and say, we lost this, let's move on in the best interest of the league, in the best interest of all parties concerned. You fought the good fight. You thought you had this power. The Players Association challenged it. They won. Eat it. Live with it. And let's move on and get back to the business of discussing football. Stephen A., I agree with you. And I'm shocked that the, the league wa uh, lost this case also. But what it goes to sh show you, although Roger, they, the players and the owners gave Roger Goodell absolute power, the judge basically said, your power, you were so egregious in the punishment that you handed down. I have no choice but to vacate this. Well, I think the judge definitely said that, and it's perfectly within the judge's uh, right to do so. I think the thing that we all have to be alarmed about is precedent usually stated, usually states rather, that the commissioner's power via the collective bargaining agreement is absolute. We're usually not inclined to usurp the authority handed to the commission of our collective bargaining negotiation. Here was an exception where even the judge acknowledged that it was an aberration that usually he nor any other judge is prone to lean in this direction and make these decisions. The fact that they were willing to do so in this case 
speaks to how egregious they felt Commissioner Goodell's abuse of power actually was in this case. And as a result, more so than in anything else, whether it be Ray Rice, whether it be Greg Hardy, or a litany of other issues that we can point to, I think in this particular case involving Raj Goodell, I can't imagine anything that has hurt him more than this, because whereas domestic violence issues and off-the-field legal issues may be something he may have mishandled from time to time, that was outside the game of football. So whether it be ignorance, incompetence, insensitivity, or whatever, you can sort of get away from that because, of, because you're the commissioner and you're perceived as an individual that may not have known better. But this is directly relating to football. This falls under his purview. And the fact that he has been labeled egregious and abusive in his power, in this case by this judge, even if they do win in appellate court, the fact remains that Raj Goodell has been significantly stained in all of this, and Tom Brady has been exonerated. And one judge in the previous case uh, of Stephen A. said arbitrary. But I think what the commissioner, what he lost in the fight against Tom Brady, he gained with some of the players, Stephen A., because what we have, what we have seen in the past is that he had no problem suspending a Michael Vick for a year, a Pac-Man Jones for a year, and a litany of other players for an extension, uh, for an extensive uh, period of time. But he stepped outside of the box. He went after one of the Mount Rushmore quarterbacks in the National Football League because he felt and the league felt that Tom Brady had committed a, 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 an integrity or conduct detrimental to the league uh, and so he stepped outside of the box. He gained a lot of credibility with some of his players in this league, Stephen A. By, even though he lost, the league lost, he gained a lot by taking this uh, fight to Tom Brady. Well, I will say this to you. You can look at it that way, Shannon. I'm not sure I agree with that. Uh, I would have to lean towards my man Skip on this particular notion. You can say that he's gained credibility with the players for showing a willingness to go after Tom Brady, but I think the big winner in this is the Players Association oh, in concert in concert with Jeffrey Kessler because their willingness to take this fight to Roger Goodell, something I've lamented simply due to all the money of the players that they were spending in order to pull this off by showing that indeed Roger Goodell can be beaten, especially if they win this in appellate court as well, assuming that the league takes it to that next level. If the Players Association wins that battle already by winning this battle, of today, that really emboldens them and validates not just their existence, but the willingness in which they have to fight time and time again with Roger Goodell. I don't think there's any way that Roger Goodell comes out looking good in all of this simply because he has shown that his investigation was suspect to begin with, and he leaned on it so heavily. If he hired, if he never hired Ted Well and just suspended Tom Brady, that would be different. But the fact that you spent five million dollars on an investigation, and then that investigation ended up with so many holes, yet you stood so steadfast in support of that investigation. If you are Roger Goodell, I think that's more of a stain than it is a compliment to the job performance you're exercising. Outside of that, the only thing that I would like to say is that I'm actually very happy about this decision, not just because I'm going to get to see Tom Brady play from week one, but the biggest reason is because I don't have to see that brat known as Skip Bayless <laughs> sitting across the table from me, <laughs> whining and crying about brat. Tom Brady getting messed over, what have you. I can now see Skip Bayless smile a little bit more, mm. be a little bit more affable, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit more calm. He's not terrorizing Molly. Mm. He's not terrorizing <laughs> Chuck Salaturo or, or Kevin Reed and yeah. all the producers. He's actually going to give my colleagues and our staff a break mm. for a change instead of being a whining brat for Tom Brady that he has been. Mm -hmm. It's good to see you smile again, bro. It's good to see A couple you. of things there. 
Number one, I hate it when you take vacation because you get to rest your vocal cords and you come back on even from remote and you talk even more than you usually do when you're sitting in this chair in the studio. You've talked and talked, you've talked this all the way through two breaks already. And, and another thing, just for the record, just and I, our hardcore longtime viewers understand this, but when Stephen A. Smith insults my clothes, that means he's completely out of ammo and cannot win the oh. argument. He has lost the argument completely and I want to state for the record that for the longest time on this show Stephen A. Smith was dug in that Tom Brady cheated and he lied about it. Am I right about that, my friend? Stephen so that was, that was, it, 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 in all seriousness, it's scary. in fairness to me, that was my initial position. And then as we both looked at the report and the preponderance of evidence, we saw some holes in Ted Wells' investigation. The difference between you and I is that you were willing to completely exonerate Tom Brady. And I was mm -hmm. willing to say to you that I don't think he knew about the deflated footballs. I don't think he cheated, but he was uncooperative I believe that, and I believe that he brought most of this on himself. And had he been a bit more cooperative and worked the cachet that comes along with his great name, then obviously I think the results of all of this would have been incredibly different because I don't think he would have gotten to this point. Okay. I think he got to this point because he's been fighting unnecessarily. That's what I said, and I okay. still stand by that. Fair enough. Now, remember what I told you two days after the Wells report came out? that Tom Brady's ultimate goal here, long-term ultimate goal, take down the commissioner, expose his lack of integrity or credibility, whatever you want to call that, to the point that he could lose his job over it. I'm going to point out to you, Stephen A., remember, the previous commissioner, Paul Tagliabue, came in on top of Goodell's bounty gate rulings and rescinded all those, vacated all those. Remember that? That was a terrible yes, blow to, to Roger Goodell. This is an early, terrible blow to Roger Goodell. Again, I don't know how this is going to play out in appellate court, but my, my question back to you is, could this ultimately cost the job of a commissioner who's clearly still very well liked and respected by the majority of owners? That all depends on whether or not this impacts the respectability that the NFL brand has to Joe Public and how much money it could inevitably cost them. I don't think either situation is going to, to, to reap any fruit, and as a result, I think Roger Goodell is safe. I do believe that it, uh, this hurts him in terms of him exercising his power. I do believe that for future reference, owners, his bosses, will step up and say, you know what, that ain't worth the fight, that ain't worth the battle, we need you to chill on this, because you saw what happened in Tom's past. I don't believe, however, this this equates to Bounty Gate. If you recall, during Bounty Gate, Skip, a lot of what influenced the commissioner's decision at the time was having Greg Williams, the former defensive yep. coordinator, dead to rights, and, and, and Coach Sean Payton presumably lying to Roger Goodell's face. So those things emboldened Rod Goodell to make the decisions that he made. And even though Paul Tagliabue came to a different conclusion, we could sort of understand why why Roger Goodell jumped to the conclusions that he jumped to in light of Greg Williams and Sean Payton. In this particular instance, all he had was the Ted Wells investigation, an investigation that the league paid $5 million for. So I think this is far more incriminating to the, res to the reputation yep. and to the respectability of Roger Goodell than Bounty Gate. Okay, one last quick point. I have a confession to make publicly. I miss you. Aww. I miss you, man. Well, listen, man. Well, listen, Aww, man. Come on now. Well, 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 first of all, first of all, first of all, I miss my boy too. I miss my boy too. I always take off right before the football season starts because after that, there ain't no days off. Mm. So I know you miss me. I miss you too. I even miss those loud outfits you're wearing. <laughs> but in the end, always remember this, Skip. It's just a vacation. I shall return. You better. And Molly. You know I miss you. And Shannon, I love you, bro. You Appreciate know that. It. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And the, th the thing is, Skip, what I want to say, it doesn't matter what you think. My criminal, when I was in college, my criminal law professor said, son, it's not what you think. It's what can you prove. And looking at from the com uh, the commissioner's point of it, okay, he thought he had Tom Brady. He thought he had enough probable cause, more probable than not, mm -hmm. generally aware. 
whatever that whatever that standard is in, in civil yeah. that he was using. But the judge says you can't prove this. No direct evidence. Mm. And that's and, and and that's so either they're going to have to adopt a new standard mm -hmm. where probable cause where the, the civil were more probable than not, unless they have a smoking gun, uh, mm -hmm. a definitive proof, because this standard clearly the judge have frowned upon it. The standard works in the NFL court, but it doesn't work in the real court. <laughs> exactly. Right? I, I guess so. Yeah. Stephen A., thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Hope you're relaxing. Have some fun there. Let your hair down. And, uh, I'm lovely. I'm lovely. What? I'll see y'all Tuesday. <laughs> Drink some water for me, Let your hair down. It means enjoy yourself. No, I, mean, I won't say it. What? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Stephen A., we miss you. We'll see you soon here. You guys, i got to share two tweets. Foxborough, mm -hmm. Skip, your final thoughts. You know, Shannon, I'm sure a whole lot of Brady haters and Patriot haters are, so to speak, deflated right now as we speak. But listen, no Tom Brady for the first four games had cast a pall over the start of the NFL season. Yes. And now that he is definitely going to play weeks one through four, I am so ready for some football. Yes. I think everybody is. I agree with you, Skip, because with him, if he had been suspended... That's the topic of conversation. Yep. No matter how great the games are, you're still talking about the New England Patriots, the reigning Super Bowl champs, playing without the Super Bowl MVP. Now that he's playing, now we can now we can get back to talking about who has the best chance of getting in, getting to meet in Super Bowl Fifty. And uh, as they as you mentioned, you have to like the Patriots because Tom Brady has given me no indication that he's slowing down. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned all the uh, injuries on offense that I didn't even know about. I was just talking about their defense, but. We know Coach Belichick teams, they progress as the season progresses. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised if at the end we're like, I can't believe they got back again. Yeah. The Patriots, a Cowboys? Patriots, Cowboys? Oh, uh, yeah, who you picking then? Oh, I, I reserve the right to not pick anybody if that happens. <laughs> you got another one but of your guys going You, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I have mixed emotions because now Tom Brady will be back for the fourth game, if, I, if memory serves, that's yes. at Dallas and yes. Jerry World. Yes. So that I have mixed emotions well, because now that gives the you. Patriots a lot better chance of beating my Dallas the Cowboys. Most, mm -hmm. The happiest people are the person that, the, the uh, network that has that game. They're the, <laughs> yes. they're the most happy. Wow, wow. <laughs> You've got some other things to watch tonight, though. Tim Tebow, we forgot about him. I will be watching we'll be every snap at seven. and hoping they're not last snap. And snaps then how about college Tebow. football? Michigan at Utah. That kicks off tonight as How well. About we'll TCU discuss at Minnesota. all that fallout tomorrow right here on First Take. Shannon, thank you so, so Way much. Way to go. Man. Thanks for having me, Molly. We'll great job. Soon. Thank you. Skip, congratulations. Thank, thank you guys you. for hanging with us. Have a great day.